Hi everyone, in part one we created a space for a walk-in closet. Now in part two we're going to build the furniture that we need so we can maximize this space as much as possible. Now that we're back in the shop, we can finally start building these inserts for the closet. And to do that, I'm going to be using mostly three quarter inch maple plywood. Um, I'm going to be cutting these down to a more comfortable size and then cutting them down to exact sizes on the table saw. And I am not going to show you too much of the cutting because there is a lot of cutting in this project. If you want to build one of these, I have plans available in my Etsy shop with detailed cut lists to make things a lot easier. Uh, I'll link it in the description so you can check that out. So these are the side panels to shelving units which are going to be in our closet. So what we're going to be doing here is making shelf pin holes. These are the holes that allow you to have adjustable shelves within your unit. And there's a couple of different ways you can do that. You can go out and buy a jig if you like and this one is made by Craig and I'll link it in the description if you want to buy one of these. Uh, but you don't need one of these. I've for the longest time have been using pegboard. If you get a piece of pegboard, the holes are evenly spaced, they're the same quarter of an inch in diameter. And as long as you line them up carefully, you'll get the same result. So whichever you choose, they'll both work just fine. I'm using a 10 inch spacer here. That way I don't have to make holes all the way at the bottom. There's just no point in that. Uh, and once I set my first few holes, the, this, this jig comes with a pin so it keeps it locked in. And you can just keep working your way up. The most important thing when you're doing this is to make sure that the rows of holes are completely parallel with each other and that what I mean by that is when you have your shelf if these two holes are not the same position this way uh, horizontally the shelf is going to wobble and that's not going to be good so you want to make sure that they are exactly horizontal and the same height from the bottom of the board uh, and that's why I'm using the spacer this kind of makes it a little bit easier once you're finished drilling the shelf pin holes uh, give it a light sanding, blow it off, and now we're ready to move on to the next part, which is we're going to be cutting rabbits in the back ends of all of our panels that are going to be basically facing the back wall where these things are going to be drilled into. The purpose of that is to allow us to be able to install a back panel. Cutting a rabbit into the back edge of our exterior shell of our shelving unit for this closet is going to allow, it to allow me to close the back with a quarter inch piece of ply. It's actually a little, bit, a little bit less than a quarter of an inch. And as you can see, it's totally flush here, which means the edge is concealed, and this edge here will be up against the wall, nobody will ever see it. There is one more thing we need to do before we start assembling, and that is to put on some edge banding. Now, edge banding, if you've never done any work with that before, it basically allows you to turn uh, plywood into something that doesn't look like plywood it actually looks like a solid piece of wood. So we're gonna be applying edge banding on all the exposed edges of this, these closet parts that we're putting together. So how it works is one side is a veneer of the material that you're using, and since I'm using maple plywood, this is maple veneer. And the back side of it is glue, and it's heat sensitive, so as soon as you apply heat to it, it gets soft and it starts to um, do its thing. You can use a utility knife if you don't plan on doing a lot of edge banding work to trim the edges off of this. You just have to be careful. Uh, but since I know that this is a bigger project and I just want speed right now, I did go and on Amazon and I did buy a couple of tools to make this process a little bit easier. But again, those tools are optional, so it's completely up to you. Once we have everything cut down, it's going to be pretty easy to assemble. We are going to be using pocket holes for most of the assembly. Uh, most of the horizontal pieces will have the pocket holes. None of the vertical, vertical pieces will.
Also a little tip that might save you from damaging your units before they're installed. I'm just screwing in a couple of pieces of scrap wood in the bottom. That way I can drag them around the shop and get them out of my way. Uh, as you can see, uh, it's going to be getting a little crowded in here. And I, the last thing I want to do is ruin them before I can get, get, actually get to use them. There is going to be one shelf that is permanently installed and that's going to be right in the middle of these tall units here. And, and that is just to give each, each of the sides more stability, especially because we're going to be hanging a, a rod from the sides of this thing and there will be some weight on there. So I don't want to see anything happen to it over time. Unfortunately, I don't have a biscuit joiner, so I'm going to be using three 18 gauge nails on each side of this shelf to hold it into position until the glue dries. Now there is one more unit left to assemble and that is the piece with the drawers in it. I'm going to have three drawers and to do this you're going to need some drawer slides. Now the right drawer slides would be 14 inch. I only have 12 inch. I have a whole bunch of these left over from an old project. So I'm going to use a 12 inch. If you don't have any drawer slides like this laying around, buy the right ones. You can fit 14 inch drawer slides in, your, in this particular piece here. Now I've always found it easier to install the drawer slides before I assemble the whatever it is that I'm assembling. So that's what I'm going to do here and after I do install them I'm going to put some tape over them that way none of the debris or dust gets in it while I'm still working on this piece. All right so here is a mistake. I forgot to put edge banding on the outside edges of these which is going to be visible when the drawers are open. So I'm going to try to put on the edge banding without removing these and if I can that's great if not then all of this has to come off and we have to do it all over again. Let's see how it goes. You probably notice that some of the edges of the plywood are visible and they don't have any edge banding on it. And that's because I'm planning on putting some real maple over it. This is my first time using this thickness planer and everything that everybody's ever said about it is true. This thing is awesome. I'm not doing a review on it because there's a lot of them out there and it's just awesome. I am milling these down to a standard 1x2 size that you can find pretty much at any lumberyard or big box store.
So the last thing that we're going to be building before we install everything and basically finish this project is a shoe holder and there's going to be a couple of them in certain places in this closet and you'll see what I mean once I start installing it. Uh, and to do that we're basically just going to be making a simple angled platform so that these shoes can sit comfortably on there and it'll be easier for us to organize. We're back in the closet and before we can install these units, we need to check how level this floor is. And to be honest, I already did and it's really, really bad. It's so bad that we can't just sit them on the floor. So I'll show you what I mean. So this is level and it looks like about five eighths of an inch. And this is not even the full run. This is only six feet of it. So it, as this thing goes further along, the gap widens. So we're going to go upstairs and we're going to figure out a solution to this problem. The solution to this problem is actually not too complicated. We're going to first build a base that all of these units can sit on top of and before we actually install the units, the base will be put into position and then we can level off the base first and then we'll put the units on top of it and it should be perfect. To make it easier to adjust our base, we're going to be using these. These are called T-nuts. What this allows us to do is we can put a threaded bolt on here and we can adjust the height of these based on how deep you screw each of these little bolts in.
I am not going to go into detail on the drawer installation process in this video. Uh, I feel like that's a whole separate video, or it could be. Uh, and there are quite a few of them out there, so if you do need more info on that, you can just do a search, and there's a lot of good stuff out there. I am trying something new here. I'm using a hot glue gun to temporarily hold the drawer faces into position. Uh, it actually worked out pretty well. If you are new to the channel, please check out my channel page where I have all my other videos. There's a whole bunch of them there. And if you like what you see, please think about subscribing. I am also on Instagram, so you can check that out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you have any questions, put those in the comments and I will get back to you as soon as possible. Thank you again for watching and I will see you in the next one.